This tutorial is about using the computer program Adobe Animate and creating essentially a puppet and then rigging it using the bone tool. You create a full HD HTML5 canvas, 24 frames per second, and you're going to use the shape tool and the color picker. Uh, make the outline uh, clear and the color, the color of the head of your puppet. And I'm just going to use the circle tool to make the head. And then I'm going to use the brush tool to make the rest of the details, the nose, the eyes, the mouth. I'm changing the color as I go appropriately. Um, when I'm done, I'm going to select the entire head using the um, free transform tool. And I'm going to just squish it so it's a little bit more of an egg shape and a little bit less of a... Of a um, of a circle. Then I'm going to select the entire head and I'm going to turn it into a movie clip called Hit. So it's a, a, a convert to symbol movie clip. And then I'm going to use the shape tool uh, and this time I'm going to use a square to make the neck, convert to symbol, movie clip, name it neck. Um, again I'm going to change the color um, make a body, create to symbol, body, and then I'm going to just use the move tool to put them all together. And I need one more shape. Uh, I need the hips. So it's almost going to look like a little diaper. I'm going to just use the brush tool to create it. And I will make that blue because I want it to be the same color as the top of the pants. So after I've put together my head, neck, and body, I'm going to use the brush tool and create a um, the hips. So I'm just going to draw it, fill it in, um, right click, convert to symbol, movie clip symbol, and name it hips. Um, I can erase it before it's a symbol. I can't do any erasing after it's turned into a symbol, but I can use the free transform tool to alter its size so that it fits the body. That's what I'm doing now. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to use the bone tool. I'm going to start at the top of the torso and go up to the neck and then the head, and then I'm going to start at the torso again from my beginning point and go down to the hips. Now that little white dot in the middle of each shape is the pivot point. Uh, if you need to change the pivot point to make it more uh, closely resembling a human body, what you do is you just use the free transform tool and when you click on a shape with a free transform tool you can change where the dot goes. So um, I've now rigged the head, neck, and torso and hips of my of my puppet and now I'm going to uh, name that layer uh, I'm gonna name that uh, armature layer uh, head neck and body or whatever head and body um, and you can see the armature layer at the bottom is like a little running man um, it, it just creates a new layer that includes the head neck and body so now I'm going to create a new layer, and in it I'm going to start creating the arms. So again, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. The upper arm is going to be red to match the shirt. I'm going to convert to symbol, name it upper arm. Uh, the lower arm is going to be uh, skin colored to match the uh, head and neck. And I'll name that lower arm and convert to symbol. Um, I'm going to use a, the oval tool, the ellipse tool, to make the hand. And if you want to, again, change the pivot point on any shape, just use the free transform tool and just move that dot. So you want the upper arms uh, pivot point to be near the shoulder, the lower arms to be near the elbow, and the hands to be near the wrist. So you just kind of move that little dot. If you find that one of the shapes is in front and it should be in back, um, after you've converted it to a symbol, you can actually um, right click and go arrange and then send backward or bring forward so that the the shapes are overlapping each other in an, in a, 
a way that makes sense. And then when you do the bone tool, you're going to, after you've arranged the arm, you're going to use the bone tool. You're going to start at the shoulder and you're going to then um, click it into the next shape to go to the elbow and then from the elbow to the wrist. So once you have um, rigged the arm, then you can move it on top of the body. Now the way that you move the arm on top of the body after you're done rigging it, well, let me, first let me, um, let me just make sure that everything's in the right place and then I'm going to rig it uh, it's a, um, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist. Uh, with the bone tool I'm going to just wobble it back and forth and check out that it um, is moving the right way. If you click on a shape, you can actually constrain the movement a little bit so that it doesn't, not, you don't have the wrist flipping all around. Um, but once you have created the arm, you go down to the layer menu and um, you're going to rename that armature arm. And then once you've done that, you can do, you click on the layer and right click and duplicate the layer. And that gives you the other arm. And at this point, you can drag the layers so that the one arm is in front of the body and the other arm is under the body. So you're going to actually drag the layers up and down and rename it. Uh, you can name it near arm, far arm, you know, just so you know which one is which. But one arm should be uh, in the layer above the body. The other should be in the layer below the body. And the way that you make a second arm is you just go down to the layer menu and you right click and duplicate layer. So now that I've created the two arms, I'm going to just use the free transform tool and drag it across all those shapes. And I can just click on the arm. Um, you actually have to click on a part of the arm to, uh, to drag it. Now I'm dragging it. That one's in back. And the other one is um, in front. And now I've got the two arms. Now I'm going to follow the exact same procedure, identical for the legs. And because it is the same procedure, I'm going to just speed right through it. Um, you create one leg, you rig it um, with a bone tool, and then you duplicate that layer and you rearrange the layers so that one layer is in front of the body, the other layer is below the body. So I'm going to do that part very, very quickly. I named this shape thigh. I'm going to convert it to a movie symbol. Um, I'm going to name this one calf. I'm going to um, convert it to a, a movie um, symbol, movie clip symbol. I'm going to click on the free transform and change where the pivot point is. I'm going to name that one foot. I'm going to put them all together. I'm going to rig them really quickly, starting at the hip and going uh, down to the knee and then to the ankle. Um, if you find that a shape is flipping around too much, you can uh, click on the sh shape with the select tool and you can um, constrain it so that it doesn't flip around so much. And then you drag the uh, free transform tool over all three shapes um, and then you can just click on, on it and move it um, to the right position and then you're going to go down to the layer menu you're going to duplicate that layer and you're going to drag it so that one is behind the body the other's in front of the body and now you're ready to start creating uh, keyframes on your timeline so I'm going to go to the two second mark and I'm going to click on every single one of the layers. I'm going to click, um, I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to click on every single one of the layers and then I'm going to right click and insert keyframe. And then I'm going to use the, um, the, uh, the um, free transform tool and select the entire puppet and I'm going to drag it a little bit to the right and then I'm going to use the select tool and I'm going to move the arms and legs in order to reposition the puppet and then I'm going to go to the four second mark and select every single frame every single um, layer on the on the timeline and I'm going to 
right click and insert another keyframe and then I'm going to um, select my entire puppet using the free select tool and I'm going to move the entire puppet slightly to the right and then I'm going to use the selection tool to um, take my puppet and reposition the arms and legs and then I'm going to go to the six second mark and I'm just going to keep doing that over and over again going to um, adding two seconds moving my puppet and changing the position of the arms and legs and this is essentially a uh, what's called pose to pose animation as opposed to keyframe animation you're creating the poses at various keyframes and the the uh, program is actually putting all the in-between frames in there for you um, so it's you're you're creating a pose and then you're going to create another pose two seconds later and then another pose two seconds later you keep doing that and the program will fill in between. Um, now if you notice just now, every once in a while, one of the arms or legs would disappear. That's because I forgot to select one of the layers when I inserted the next keyframe. So you have to kind of go up and down the timeline to make sure that every single layer is selected or else one of the arms or one of the legs isn't going to make it into the next keyframe. Well, you just keep doing this, lather, rinse, repeat. And until your character has gone all the way off the edge of the page and by this point my uh, character has um, done his little walking and jumping for about 12 seconds so now once I get him off the edge of the page and I've, um, I've kept rearranging his pose over and over again try and make his his arms and legs um, approximate what a human being would do in a walk cycle so that the movement looks realistic and every time you create a new pose, go back and test what you've done. You can always go back to the beginning or any other point during the video and you can um, tweak it and change the emotions. And once you've, you're satisfied with what you have and you've tested and played it several times, you're ready to put in a background. So the way that I put in a background was I did... Um, file import import to stage and I actually had a, a JPEG of a cityscape that I drew about a year or two ago and I, I clicked on that and I imported it onto the stage of my of my um, my video and once I got it onto the stage I enlarged it by hitting the tree free transform tool to make it take the entire stage now you got to make sure that you are importing it to the very bottom layer. So you may want to create a new layer at the very bottom of, of the stack and be clicked on that brand new layer when you import this to the stage. Otherwise, it's going to cover over your figure. You're going to have to go down to the timeline and pull the background till you get to the very end of the video because by default, it's going to just put that background up to the very first keyframe. So you have to pull it out the rest of the way. So I, I did file, save as, and I named it. And once you have saved your flash file, it's time to export it as an MP4. So you just do, well, file, save as, you name it. Um, and then you're going to do file, export, export video. And what happens is it's going to take your video and it's going to send it to the media encoder. Once the... Adobe Media Encoder pops up on the stage. You just click that little um, green arrow in the corner and uh, it will export it as an MP4. And the MP4 is actually what you need. Um, you don't want to, you don't want the flash file or a .mov file or anything like that. You need a, the MP4. So when you're turning in your work into Google Classroom, make sure it is the MP4 that you turn in. Now I'm just going to pull up my little MP4 here and see how my finished video looks. Very good. That's how you use the bone tool in Adobe Animate to create and rig a puppet.